لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, Welcome to the first lecture in psycholinguistics Psycholinguistics is a very very interesting uh, topic or area of linguistics and I hope that you, you will find it uh, so in the coming lectures uh, My name again is Abdulaziz Al-Turki and I will be your tutor here it makes sense uh, not to go straight away to the uh, details but first to look at the beginning concepts we want to make sure that you understand the basic concepts of uh, psycholinguistics and one of the first things that we want to start with is the definition it makes sense right to look at the definition before we go uh, into details so the first thing is the definition of psycholinguistics. Psycholinguistics, as its name suggests, is an interdisciplinary field of study. First of all, I'll just read it for you, and then we are going to um, um, discuss it. So psycholinguistics is an interdisciplinary field of study in which the goals are to understand how people acquire language, how people use language to speak and understand one another and uh, how language is represented and processed in the brain. What does that mean? First of all, psycholinguistics is an interdisciplinary field of study. Interdisciplinary here consists of three parts. So enter, discipline, and then the suffix ary. Okay, so enter basically means between or among. So intercontinental, for example, enter, we, we know the word continent, so Asia, Africa, Europe, America, all of that, all right? Um, so intercontinental, that means between or among continents, okay? So interdisciplinary. Enter, we know what that means. Enter between or among. Then we have discipline. Discipline, for example, linguistics is a discipline. Mathematics is a discipline. Medicine is a discipline. And so on. So we have different disciplines. Psycholinguistics is an interdisciplinary field of study. What does that mean? That means it combines more than one discipline or area of study. What are the areas? Well, if we look at the psycholinguistics, if you look at the name psycholinguistics, we can tell that it consists of psycho, which is the first part, and linguistics. So psycho comes from psychology and linguistics. That is, linguistics from the perspective, from the perspective of psychology, linguistics, from the perspective of psychology. All right. So basically, it's psychology and language. Looking at language from a psycholinguistic perspective. Now, it's an interdisciplinary field of study in which the goals are. So we have some goals here. Probably, it makes sense to number them. First of all. What is the first thing that we do with language? Children, what's the first thing that they do with language? They acquire language. So this is the first thing that we focus on, or the first goal. So the first goal is to understand how people acquire language. And that makes sense, because that's the first thing that we do with language. So how people acquire language? What are the processes that are involved in language acquisition. Then, what do we do once we have acquired a language? We use it. We speak and we understand. So that's our second goal. Our second goal is how people use language to speak and understand one another. So, what are the processes that are involved in uh, speech production or comprehension? What are the processes that are involved in these uh, processes, basically? And then, once we are done with that, how language 
that which is number three how language is represented and processed in the brain so we look at processing itself what does the brain do with language All right how language is created how speech is produced how uh, well how language is represented in the brain where is language in the brain is it at the occipital lobe at the frontal lobe at the left hemisphere right hemisphere where is language in the brain so these are the kind of questions that we are interested in in psycholinguistics so we have uh, a number of goals here we have a number of goals we we first look at language acquisition then language use that is speech production or comprehension and then how language is represented represented and processed in the brain so that's the definition or let's say one of the definitions of psycholinguistics of course there are many but this one um, is enough I believe all right now as linguists we all we always repeat that that language is creative right so any one of us can say well that child or that person is creative he is smart or she is smart but do we have evidence do we have evidence this is what we look at in uh, in academia in academic uh, disciplines so we look at the evidence now our claim is that human language is creative do we have any arguments at least any arguments that um, the human language is creative yes here we have a couple of arguments arguments number one and number two number one humans can produce and understand an infinite number of sentences what does that mean infinite means unlimited every single day we produce different sentences today you produce sentences that you have never heard before sentences that you have never you know, produced before we produce new sentences probably some sentences that no one else had uh, produced before so that tells us something about how creative the human language is every single day we produce new words new uh, sentences new phrases uh, uh, new poems for example new types of texts what is remarkable is that other people actually can understand that new language and this is also remarkable and creative so we create new sentences that makes sense but how come that different people or other people actually can understand what we say even though we say it for the first time that's a new sentence that that's a new sentence uh, just produced right so possibly the reason behind that is that we know the rules governing how elements are used we know we have something in our minds that help us understand uh, that new sentence and I will give you an example in some languages they have ver they have object verb subject okay so if you want to say something you start with the object not the subject so for example if you have an if uh, for example Khalid ate the apple they would say apple ate Khalid okay meaning Khalid actually ate the apple but in that language this is how syntax works it's the other way around it's object verb subject so if you happened to learn that language and then you learn new words say for example banana um, and move or moved all right uh, you might produce a new sentence which is banana move or moved 
Khalid. Okay? And that will be a new sentence that you've never heard before, but you have knowledge of the syntax of this construction, which is object, verb, subject. Okay? Yeah, so you have the knowledge in your mind, and because you have that knowledge, you understand when you hear sentences like uh, banana or apple, ate Khalid, you understand that in that language, it's Khalid who, hate, uh, who ate the apple. All right? So you know who did what. You know who did what. So that's number one. We as humans can produce and understand an infinite number of sentences. Then, as humans, that's argument number two, as humans, we can communicate anything we can think of. What does that mean? Well, that's very simple. Anything that you can think of, anything that crosses your mind, you can say it. You can argue, you can argue back, uh, you can uh, explain something, you can suggest, you can express your feelings using language. You can basically say whatever crosses your mind. So this is really remarkable. This is really creative. Because not all, I would say, uh, life creatures can do that. Only humans can do it. Animals cannot do it. All right? So they have limited number of uh, communication systems, I would say, but not language. Language is specific to humans. Right. Now, this is really important. The distinction between language, speech, uh, thought, and communication. Some people confuse these together. And I can see why this happens. Language, speech, communication, and thought. If you think about it, they are... They are uh, linked together, right? We're talking about this, the more or less same field, the same area, all right? But are they the same or different? Let's read this together, and then we will determine if they are the same or different. Language is the primary communication system for the human species. In ordinary circumstances, it is used to convey thoughts through speech. It is a special system, however, that functions independently of speech, thought, and communication. So after reading this, do you think that language, communication, speech, and thought are the same thing or different things? If you read closely, the answer is there towards the end. It's a special system, it's a special system, that is language, that functions independently of speech, thought, and communication. So language functions or works independently of the others. So we are not talking about the same thing. We are not talking about the same thing. All right. Now, let's look at them one by one and see how they are the same or different. Let's look at them and see how they are the same or different. Let's look at them one by one. First of all, speech and language are the same or different? So many people would confuse speech and language. Speech and language. And why people confuse these? Because because we use speech to convey or transmit linguistic information. Basically, the linguistic information or the, the message in your mind, in your, in your mind or in your brain. So this is a message. There's a message in your mind. You want to say something. You use, normally, we you use speech to express that uh, thing or that idea in your mind. Okay? So that's why people confuse language and speech. 
speech is not language. There is a big difference between speech and language. Speech is only one mode for transmitting linguistic information. One mode, one option, one way of conveying what you are thinking of. Okay, so speech is one way. Do we have other modes? Do we have, our, do we ha do we have other options or other ways? Yes, we do. Examples are sign language or graphic representation. That is, writing. So you can write. If you want to express an idea, you can write or speak. So speech is not the only way of transmitting linguistic information. It's only one option. We have other options. Sign language, we have graphic representations or uh, language. But language is primarily, of course, oral. Language is primarily oral. So think of it um, 5,000 years ago or before that, people did not invent writing. The first piece of writing appeared around 5,000 years ago. That's the earliest, the earliest evidence we have of writing. So what about before that? Before that, people did not invent writing, we believe. So language, uh, or, or let's say, um, language was primarily oral. And still, we rely on oral language more than written language. Okay, so that's why people confuse the two, speech and uh, language. Uh, obviously, uh, the written system is a cultural art artifact, that is, it's a man-made, it's man-made. Uh, so people came up with this idea. And that's why uh, the written system in different languages works differently. That's why we have different graphemes. That's why we have uh, different ways or systems of writing. For example, we have alphabetic languages, such as English, for example. We have letters. The letters represent sounds. But in some other languages, for example, Chinese, the letters or symbols do not represent sounds. They represent words. So it's a different... Uh, system of writing okay and it's 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 written top down not right left or left right as we have in Arabic or English so it's a different system of uh, writing and that's so because it's um, it's a cultural artifact it's just people came up with this idea so different people had uh, different ways of writing. All right, now this is really interesting. Thought and language. Thought and language, are they the same or different? Now, I want you to think about it first. Think, do you think language is the same as thought or are they two different things? You can pause the video if you want think about it and then play the video to make sure whether your answer is correct or incorrect. Okay, I would say my answer is that thought and language are different. Thought and language are different and we have some arguments for that. We have some arguments for that. First of all, why do people confuse thought and language? If you ask any, any person, any lay person, he or she might say, well, thought and language are the same thing. Because when I think, I use language. All right, so that is their argument. Some people would say, if it's not spoken, it's not language. Our argument is, however, or our answer is, that we as people, we people, confuse language and thought because we verbalize our thoughts. We verbalize our thoughts. So we use language to express our thoughts. We use language to express our thoughts. And that's why people confuse the two. 
there are two different there are two different things because what about people who think but cannot verbalize who cannot talk think of people who do not speak can they think yes they can yes they can so they can speak sorry they can think but they cannot they cannot speak they can think but they cannot speak uh, and th those can be infants for example or children some children they can think but they cannot speak so language is different from thought also people with neurological pathologies or language disorders um, for example with some language disorders people cannot verbalize people cannot talk so basically they don't have speech they don't have speech or basically they cannot speak but they can think they can solve problems without any well without any issues also some animals think of crows think of dolphins think of uh, chimps for example some kinds of monkeys they can think they can solve problems but still they don't have language all right so thoughts language are different all right we have another argument so this is one of the arguments that we have people who think but cannot speak examples are infants people with neurological pathologies or language disorders and animals that's our first argument our second argument is that we have people who have specific language impairments specific language impairments let's read it in reverse it's an, an impairment or a disorder that that affects language and it's specific to language it is specific to language it does not affect any other uh, faculty of the brain all right so it's an impairment or a disorder not a disease it's an impairment or a disorder that affects language and only language um, let me just give you an overview of, of SLI or a specific language impairment if a child does not acquire language while typically developing children acquire language so people or children at his or her age they can acquire language but that child does not um, then we say specific language impairment if that child does not or did not acquire language because he or she cannot hear then this is not specific language impairment if that child did not acquire language because he was not exposed to language then this is not specific language impairment because there is a reason behind that uh, impairment if a child had a brain issue or a disease or lesion then this is not specific language impairment specific language impairment is when we have a normal child a child who can think but who cannot acquire language for some reason this is called specific language impairment now what is interesting about specific language impairment is that people or children with specific language impairment can think and they can solve very difficult problems but they cannot or they don't have language they cannot understand language prob probably and they cannot produce it properly as well so that's one evidence we have people who can think but who cannot verbalize the flip uh, side of the coin is Williams syndrome Williams syndrome people with Williams syndrome they have language but they cannot think prob probably 
So uh, the intellectual development in Williams syndrome is really, really low, but language develops normally. Language develops normally without any issues. All right, so when you compare specific language impairment and Williams syndrome, it's the opposite. In Williams syndrome, people can uh, speak, they have language, but they cannot, well, uh, we, people say they are mentally retarded, okay? But specific language impairment is the other way around. Specific language impairment, they don't have language, but they can think. All right, then last but not least, bilinguals, people who speak two languages, can express their thoughts using two different languages. So thought does not have language, it's only a thought. But you can express it using different languages. All right, so these are our arguments for the fact that thought and language are not the same. All right, then communication. When we say communication, are we referring to the same thing or different things? Language and communication. Now, language is the primary communication system for human beings. So, language is part of communication, all right? But it's not the only one. It's not the only way in which we express ourselves. It's not our only way of communication. Um, so, language can be distinguished from communication in general, all right? Because we have verbal versus nonverbal communication. For example, we have music or visual arts. We have body language, all right? We have body language. That, that is one way of communication, isn't it? As you want to communicate with others, you can use body language. You can use body language. You can use facial expressions that, that uh, send messages. Facial expressions do send messages, okay? Depending if you smile or if you... Uh, whatever, right? So if you smile, that sends a message to other people, for example. So there's a difference between communication and language. We know they are different because language is the primary communication system for human beings, but it's not, it's not the only one. We have other forms of communication. Um, think of Think of visual arts, for example. Uh, look at paintings. Some people would spend hours, all right, or at least minutes in front of drawings trying to decode the painting, trying to make sense of the painting. So what did the artist want to say? What did he want to say when he painted this painting? There is a message sometimes. There is a message in that painting. Sometimes you go to a public place and there's, um, for example, uh, a cigarette sign and a cross on top of it or across it. That means no smoking, all right? So that is not language. It's a visual art. Music also can convey messages. Music can convey messages or feelings, at least. We have epic music, for example. We have sad music. We have more or less happy music. So, yeah, there is also a message. It's one way of communication. All right. So now we've looked at communication, language, thought, and speech. We... Uh, looked at the differences between them, we looked at some arguments for and against, or let's say more, mostly for, uh, the distinction between language, communication, language and speech, language and thought, or language and communication. So we looked at that, we looked at some uh, other arguments. Uh,
so this is really important. Some people, some students would find it tricky. You just need to read it, think about it, look at the arguments that um, I gave you, and you will find it really, really uh, easy, and it makes sense, okay? It makes sense that language is different from thought, language is different from speech, language is different from communication. Some people confuse thought and speech. Thought and speech. We can use the same arguments here, for example, speech and language differences. So there are differences between speech and language. We can use the same argument here. The same argument that we used here, we can use it there. So that to use it for the distinction between thought and speech. They are different things. So we looked at each of them. And I hope that you find it easy. Look at the examples, look at the arguments, and um, hopefully, if it's not easy, it will become easy once you read it once or twice. All right, in the coming lectures, we are going to look at different concepts, also beginning concepts, uh, such as, um, so this is what we are going to look at, uh, some characteristics of the linguistic system. We're going to look at that in the coming lectures. Uh, we are going to look at descriptive and prescriptive grammar, and also the universality of human language and the implications of acquisition for bilinguals. All right, so all of that, we'll, we, will, we will look at um, that, all of that in the coming lectures, or probably in the second lecture. So, um, Thank you very much for your attention. In this lecture, if you have any questions or any concerns, you can always send me an email or just attend the live session and I will be there to answer your questions. Thank you very much and see you in the second lecture.